Hi, and welcome back to the Save It For Parts channel. Today I'm doing another sequel, or a follow-up, on my small handheld tricorder using a Raspberry Pi. Now usually I get bored with a project by the time it comes to making a third sequel. I've already done two versions of this. However, I've been invited by Tom's Hardware to do a podcast, and it would help to have a functional device. Since I've recently broken the tricorder, I figured I'd better fix it so that I have something to show off on this podcast deal. As to how it's broken, I tried too hard to make this low-profile, right-angle USB connector. I just really, really wanted there to be such a thing as a USB connector that comes straight out and then goes straight to the side. But I guess that just isn't designed to exist in the world, because I cannot make that happen. And every time I do, I short something out, or wreck my hub, or do some other terrible thing to this project. I'm trying to stuff too many things in this case, is kind of the long and short of it. So I've got a different case. It does come with a built-in speaker, but I might actually rip that out to save room. I may or may not keep some sort of a speaker system so I can listen to the RTL-SDR radio in here. But we'll see what I have room for in this case. And this is from... Um I guess the days of iPods and just right before phones and Bluetooth came out, so you're supposed to put your iPod or your other MP3 player in here, hook the speaker up with the headphone jack. That's becoming a museum piece by itself. And I think it's a little bit bigger than the one I had before, so hopefully I can cram more stuff into it. I'd like to take the speaker and amplifier module out, but it's in there with the one kind of security screw that I don't have, a triangle. I'm just going to have to fake it with the wrong tool, as usual. I already use these little screwdrivers for the wrong things, as you can tell, because they're kind of bent up already. This one's more than bent up, it's straight up broken, so I'm just going to put it on the bench grinder and try to make it into a triangle. There we go. Triangle head screwdriver. Sort of. Close enough. It looks like these existing screw mounts might work as standoffs for the Pi. So maybe I can put the sensor through this hole that used to be the volume knob. And maybe I'll keep this for a speaker, I don't know yet. There's also a little hole over here, I think that's a pressure equalization valve. Now another thing that I'm going to try is this little ribbon cable that I found. Versus just a tangle of jumpers that uh, go out to my sensor. Alright, it looks like my stupid ribbon cable actually works. Now, they say you're supposed to shut down a Raspberry Pi properly, but I don't think this shutdown actually does anything. You click on it, and it just freezes everything. It doesn't actually turn off, it doesn't actually shut down, so I don't know if that's typical or if I'm just doing this wrong. I did a little bit of searching online, and it didn't seem like there was a good answer for that. So I'm also trying to put in a better power switch. I'm just going to have this battery disconnected from the charging circuit and have a switch right in there. And that way it doesn't just come on every time I plug it into the USB. Okay, we're going to try this DHT11 sensor again, and that is the temperature and humidity sensor. I didn't have much luck with that last time, but I'm going to try a different Python code, and I'm going to try a different set of bus pins for it. All right, and we're still getting nothing. So I think my little DHT11 is DOA. So instead of cleaning up my mess of wires here, I jumped straight into trying to do something else. So I read online about a RTL-SDR fingerprinting method where you use the background noise from an RF device uh, to generate a little heat map and then you can compare it later and identify if you're close to something like an iPhone or an Android phone or uh, other electronic devices. I think right now it's just getting a lot of errors. I see permission denied in there, so I'm going to stop running this script and debug it a little more before I keep going. All right, so I'm having no luck with this radio fingerprinting thing. Um, I keep running into this undeletable file log.html. Even with sudo, there it is, it's still there. It's just this magical undeletable log file. So I'm kind of stuck with that. Um, I'm going to give up on this for the moment and move on to something else. So my desk is finally starting to look the way that 11-year-old Gabe would have loved. We got... All kinds of nerdy stuff going on here. Alright, so we've brought the Pi Tricorder out to Sandland, 
to give it a little test in a real-world environment. And by real-world, I mean the Sandland Tunnels. If you're not familiar with the Sandland Tunnels, I'll put a link up here and you can see uh, what these are all about. I've got a little intro of Sandland. This is where my monorail lives and this is where we are digging our own underground tunnels. So I'm going to fire up the Pi Quarter and see what kinds of things can we find out about the underground world. And we're currently about 100 feet underground vertically. We should be shielded from most RF radiation. Most radio signals should not be penetrating down here. Let's find out what we actually see. Now, as I would expect, the RF signals are pretty non-existent. There are a few little stray blips here and there on various channels, but that could be stuff like feedback from my flashlight charging circuit or my headlamp or just stray signals from within the Pi unit here. For example, here's a little intermittent signal and it matches pretty closely with the flashing of this LED. So it could just be getting a little bit of static from this LED here. And we can also use the thermal camera to find out things about our digging tools, like which ones are heating up. And when these get too hot, we can switch to the next tool and give the first one time to cool down. All right, my camera kind of cut out at this point, but this thing has some uses underground. It also has some things I need to tweak a little more. All right, I've tweaked the code on my thermal camera just slightly so that I can have different temperature ranges now. All right, so now we can see colder things like this snowball at the lower temperature range. Now we're back in about the 60 to 80 temperature range and we can see warm things like the cat. And this doesn't even detect my hand because it's kind of cold from being outside now. But if we go over to the stove, we can see the flame of the stove here just fine. All right, so I just did my first podcast on uh, Tom's Hardware on the PiCast. I'll throw a link in the description. Um, if YouTube will let me, I'll put one up here, but they're a little fidgety about outside links, so we'll see if that works or not. And again, um, this is the current incarnation of my Raspberry Pi tricorder. So just another uh, quick little tour here in case I forgot earlier. I've got my gutted USB power bank here, basically just the battery and the charge board. And then I've got my uh, stupid little flashy USB adapter. Got my extra ribbon cable bound up here. I don't have room for my sound card at the moment, so I need a little USB jumper so that I can jam the sound card in here. It doesn't fit currently uh, with the RTL SDR and the Bluetooth dongle. Right now I'm just running some Wi-Fi scanning, so it's kind of like the old war driving that you used to do with a Pringles can. So that's about all I've got for part three of the Pi Tricorder. I do still have this whole box of extra stuff, so at some point I might do a part four, or I might move on to a different Pi project like a weather station, or some kind of boat electronics, or something else. Until then, thanks for watching, and uh, feel free to like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.